Hi there, this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe, where today we are discussing success through a positive mental attitude. Written by Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone. This particular book is from 1969. The book itself was written in 1960. It is an extension of Law of Success, then Think and Grow Rich, and now Success Through Positive Mental Attitude. And what it's taking are the success principles that Napoleon Hill uh, documented through his study and interviewing of successful business people. And in this particular book, you know, we're just looking at it with a different set of eyes and a different, um, different stories. So it's pretty good. Those new to the program in the live stream, there is a copy of the PDF. As you can see that, which is in the drop-in, should be able to click it and go get your own copy. It is public domain, so it's free to share. Today on Morning Mindset Cafe, we are talking about you determine your level of satisfaction. And when I first saw this chapter, I'm, I did the, uh, well, duh, kind of feeling. <laughs> Yeah, it's all the mental attitude. So there's obviously something more to this than just mental attitude. And like all of Napoleon Hill's writings, what I like is that he gives us the something extra and the something more and the go a little deeper because it is more than just telling yourself that I'm satisfied with my job or with the work I do. It's more than just affirmations of I'm happy, I feel healthy, I feel terrific. It's more than that. Although what I just said is actually in the book as a way to get your mind focused on feeling good physically and emotionally and mentally, right? So the first thing that's acknowledged in this chapter is that satisfaction is a mental attitude. And that your mental attitude is the one thing you possess over which you have complete control. So it is in your control. And how you look at what you're doing. Now, an interesting thing, and the going a little deeper, is the importance of setting the goal as it relates to a level of satisfaction and being able to be satisfied with the work you do. And what's meant by that is satisfaction is different than being happy. It is different than just feeling good. Satisfaction is rooted in achievement, in a job well done, in finishing something. Hence the importance of having a goal. And the reason is that if you have a goal and you achieve that goal, you have that sense of satisfaction. And the higher you set your goal, the greater your achievement will be, the deeper your level of satisfaction will be when you achieve it. Again, sounds simple, doesn't it? it doesn't matter what the goal is. So if we want satisfaction in our job, let's get more specific, in our current career, in the work that we do, and not feel like it's drudgery, not feel like a slave to the clients, a slave to the employer, not feel like pressured that um, we have to do this because we committed and it's, it's, you know, I'm got to be here 10 years. I may as well show up with a smile, <laughs> but we actually want to gain satisfaction out of what we do. Doesn't matter what we're doing. Does not matter. What matters is how you're viewing what you're doing and the goals you set within the parameters of the job or the project you're working on. be a janitor or a sanitation maintenance person 
interesting titles I've come across for various jobs. And the satisfaction that comes from a job well done is all in the head. There are some people that would never take a job like that. There's some people that would never pick up a shovel and dig a ditch. The job is beneath them. And yet sometimes we have to do those sort of jobs that feel like that, right? Sometimes we have to, uh, it's just we have to, it's just a part of the work we chose. And if that's the case, then why not get a level of satisfaction out of doing a job well done? What does it mean to do well done? What does that mean? It means you've set a goal as to what well done looks like. You've set a goal as to what success looks like. And you achieve it, and then you have that level of satisfaction. Oh, I told you it was simple. Just a little bit more, but it was simple. Oh my goodness, Steve, have not seen you in ages. Good to see you. Betsy, welcome. Ron, welcome. Ina, welcome. It's good to have you all here. So the other thing that um, I think is important, um, and I only say that because it's in the book, but I also understand it because I've seen it to be true for myself, is that to succeed, to get that level of satisfaction in your work, in your project, in working, whatever it may be, right? To get that level of satisfaction, you really do need to understand what the rules are, how to apply them. And you put forth study, learn, think, and plan. So really what you're doing is you're taking ownership of accomplishing the goal. Understand that whatever that goal is that's been set, there's rules that surround it. There's rules of society, there's rules of business, there's rules of protocol, there's rules of procedures. There's just rules. Well, you don't live in a vacuum, therefore there are rules, right? But if you understand the rules, then you can work with them. It's so much easier to win a game when you know the rules, isn't it? The same thing applies to anything that we're doing in our lives. I have to understand what the rules are, and I'm pretty stickler about it. And I got to tell you, I have difficulty in, in my most difficult times are when it comes with just groups of people. And it's because I've been called a rule breaker. Um, and Betsy, yeah, I've been called a rule breaker, but in all honesty, half the time it's because I didn't understand the rules. And when it comes to interaction with people, it's been one of the biggest struggles of my life, learning those rules of engagement, learning the rules of communication. I've gotten better. I mean, it's just evidence to me when you, you, all of you who are sitting, sitting in your homes or offices or cars and joining us here on Blab for this morning, you know, I haven't chased you away. You know, there was a time where it, where it felt like I'd chased somebody away because I didn't understand what the rules were. And so I've over the, I mean, just as a kid, I learned that every set, every situation has its own set of rules. And before I step in, I need to know what they are. But there's also something else. You see, I'm not a rule breaker. And those who I talk to, I'm not comfortable being a rule breaker. And I don't know that I need to be, because there are some who are rule breakers, and they succeed in crazy ways. To me, that's that's a very risky. You know, where I'm comfortable at the moment, and this may change as I grow, is I'm a rural bender. So when I am in a uh, situation where I'm learning the rules and I don't like them because they're too restrictive, I try to figure out what the boundaries are. What's the point where you're breaking the rule? What's acceptable? And once I found that, then I can back off slightly and work within that parameter, which still expands the rule, right? 
Because again, we're working with people. And oftentimes it's they who decide whether or not my participation is going to continue. <laughs> so we've got that. Then there's knowledge and education. Becoming a master. You know, a master at either physically doing something or a master in the knowledge of something. Because the more you know, you're going to love this, the more you know, the more you can grow, right? But honestly, look how much you're bringing to the table. Look how much you're bringing to a job, to a project that has your set goal, your level of success you've outlined. This is what it looks like. And the more you're able to bring, the greater the satisfaction you have when you've reached the goal or achieved the, uh, the success that's associated with whatever you set forth. So I think that, and, and this is out of the book, and part of it's what I think, is um, that's how it works to get that, you know, I can get a level of satisfaction and I can get more satisfaction by simply bringing more to the table and more to the work I'm doing. Well, the seat's open. Anybody wants to jump in and say hi? I've got questions going on. Thank you for following the rules of Blab for questions. Um, Blab's not playing, though. They've changed the rules. They're not showing up where questions are supposed to show up. So they broke their own rules, and we're going to adjust. How about being a rule maker? Um, and there, therein lies the joy of being a business owner. But then again, I still have to do it within the parameters of business and the joy of, of um, working within the constructs of finance. Because, of course, I can't decide what to do with my money. Rules and regulations tell me what I need to do with my money. You know, all of that. I'll let you all decide what bending those rules look like. I don't touch that. <laughs> Good morning, Ron. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm okay. I like uh, looking at Betsy's questions here. I, I like the way, like you said, Blab changed the rules on us today. We, we don't see the questions, but they show up on the common screen. As, <laughs> they as do. As so far, they're still showing up there. <laughs> but uh, I like Betsy. She said, when, when you achieve your goal, uh, should you take a satisfaction break? Oh, why not? Yeah, uh, I. Why, I, why I, not? You know, that's if you achieve. What the? That's if you achieve your goal. If you don't, you know. You got to reward yourself all along the way, and instead of waiting till you get to that big goal, set it up in steps, and then when you reach that step, reward yourself for that step because you deserve it, and. And and then when you reach that big goal, yeah, then you know, then you can you can really reward yourself. But reward yourself all along the way. And then maybe when you get to that big goal, you'll say, gee, I rewarded myself all along the way. I don't have to really take a big reward. Now there's that level of satisfaction for having completed it, right? Yeah. And when she says, uh, how about a rule maker? Boy, this, when, when I saw that, it, it's like there were some people that I used to work for years ago that – owned a business and they used to make rules just because they didn't want people to get to know as much as what they did <laughs> or to achieve the level that they did. So they made the rules so that you couldn't, you couldn't reach their level. So, yeah. um, and, and that's the wrong way to make rules. So, but uh, I just wanted to answer those two, throw in my two cents on those two questions. I'm glad you did. So good to see you. So what do you think of this, uh, how to find satisfaction in your work? that we determine the level of satisfaction we're going to get in our work. According to the book, it, the, old, the, the book um, chapter is titled How to Find Satisfaction in Your Job. I'm the one changing it to your work um, to fit that some of us are solo business owners, some of us have a job, and the way we view those two words, um, I think, helps to put it in context. Well, if if you can't find satisfaction in your work or what you're doing, you're not going to be a happy person. Well, there you go. See, there's and, another, another, duh, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, 
if you're not a happy person, you know, find something to do that's going to make you happy and give you that satisfaction. Because the worst thing you can do is go through life doing something that you don't like to do. And um, how many miserable people have we known or seen or met that you can see? I could see it when I would see that they'd been at a job for 22 years and they're just holding on to get to the 25th year. Right. They're yeah. Just holding on. Um, and I've seen it in others. Well, I'll, I'll be happy then. I'll be happy when I was one of those. Once I can get all this taken care of, then I can take care of other things. I got rid of that years ago. Um, and mine was instead of uh, instead of uh, actually, I'll be happy. I was I was quite OK with just being just being calm and serene. Yeah, and then Steve's saying he was in 25th year, he's holding on after about five. I got to tell you, I had that one. My last job, it was, I knew, I knew in the first 30 days, I should have quit. I should have walked away. I look back now, and if it were me today, in all honesty, I would have walked away. And yeah. for the betterment of the company, the people there, and my own sanity. But I didn't. And, uh, you know, I learned from that. So those people that say I'll be happier when mm -hmm. when the when comes, they're still not happy. Well, no, because they really don't know when the when hits. Yeah, because there's got to be something more than this. Right. I, I've uh, when I was in my 20s, I worked at a cement plant, really hard work. And, you know, the, the guys would say, oh, I want to get my 40 years in like my father and grandfather did and everything well what are you going to do oh i'll find something to do when i retire they retired they, they were just the same miserable person they were when they were and within a couple of years they passed away because they had nothing to do nothing satisfied them they, they did they didn't I, they were just miserable all the time yeah. and uh, they had nothing to fulfill their they, life when I, it's almost working. like spent so much time waiting for the future that you didn't spend any time preparing for it, you know? Now, on the other hand, I can, I can introduce you to people that same scenario, except they're thrilled. They love what they're doing. They get great satisfaction out of a job. Well done. They're content. They have the stumbles like any other project or work or job we're doing, of course. Um, and they have roadblocks and everything else. But overall, they'll tell you that, and they may not say that they're happy, but boy, do they have a level of satisfaction. They um, they feel good about what they're doing, and they look forward to doing it some more. And I've seen many of those. It doesn't matter what the work is. I'm just going to, you know, doesn't have to suit me. It just has to suit the individual. I have met the happiest government workers in my life. At some of the because government contracts were part of what I took care of with uh, when I was a field engineer. I met some fabulous, absolutely thrilled to come to work. This was the perfect job for them down in the basement of a utility company. It was awesome. This who they were. They they came into work. They were pleasant. They um, when when they finished the job, they of course, I mean, the same just as pleasant person got you know ornery when the equipment broke and was anxious and and ticked off because my work you know you're you're holding me up. You're holding me up. But you can watch them when they everything's done and they're able to get started again. And I'd have to stay until that particular portion was completed. And it was yeah. Boy, that looks nice. And they'd say that that looks nice. Everything's right where it needs to be. And they couldn't wait to get to the next one. You know? So it, you can, it's you not can, the work you do, it's how you approach the work, right? Right. And you can usually tell a person that really is satisfied and happy with their job when you start talking to them, what do you do? They're it just comes out of them. They keep that they tell you all about what they do. The person that isn't satisfied and isn't happy with their job, you say, What do you do? Oh. I, I I just I don't want to tell you. you you wouldn't believe what I do, and you can tell that person. We can tell right away that the difference between the two people, and it could be doing the same job. One likes it, and one doesn't. Exactly, 
Exactly. So again, it's not the job or the work that we do. It's our approach to it. And is it really suited to me? And I got the best compliment yesterday. It was during a, a mastermind meeting. And it was one that I am a member of. And um, one of the members was noting, we were talking about a, a lot of different things. And then there's an opportunity that presented itself. So myself and another member are, are in talks for something. And um, how about, don't be surprised if in a couple months you don't see me broadcasting from the Bahamas. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, but one of the members said after interesting things, we were talking about changes and um, growing through changes and adjusting to changes and picking your clients and getting to a point, this particular member finally is at a point in her business where she can pick and choose who she works with. And she says, you know, Charlene, I have to ask you something. Okay. She says, I've watched you try to reinvent yourself the last couple of years. And I say, yeah. And they were instrumental in helping me, you know, figure out that I wasn't doing what I needed to do. I needed to get out of this and try something else and all that stuff. Um, so she says, I've seen you trying to reinvent yourself and something's different now, but I have to ask. I need you to tell me the decision you made in early 2015 and the direction you're going. Are you happy with that decision? And do you think you're in the right direction now? And without hesitation, I said, yes. She says, I thought so, but I wanted to be sure because it's only been recently I've been seeing the, the difference, right? Um, and she understood that it had to do with getting really committed to the adjustment and the change, but also getting out of that survival mode because they were instrumental in that as well, trying to help me get my, my attention focused elsewhere. Um, and moving forward and that sort of thing. So she just told me yesterday, she said that um, she just wanted confirmation because she was seeing it now. And so that, that to me is a compliment because it's directly related to what you're talking about, Ron, right? We're showing through our activity, our level of satisfaction, our level of gratitude, our level of, of uh, excitement or enthusiasm about what we do. It, it, it does show, I, I, last week, I think it was a week ago, I was talking to someone I, I hadn't talked to in a long time, and <clears throat> she kind of like did an interview with me, <laughs> she, she, just talking, but it was, you know, she, she was trying to find out more about me, which she didn't know, and I was talking to her, and she said to me, she said, Ron, she says, you know what, she says, you're doing the wrong thing. I said, what do you mean? She says, no, you like what you do. But she says, you ought to be teaching it. She said, when you started telling me about how you help people and how you taught people to do this and do that, she said, you lit up, you had a smile on your face, you leaned into the camera. She said, without even knowing it, she said, that's what you ought to be doing. And uh, she completely got me thinking in another direction, you know, where to take what I'm doing and, and, and take it to a, in, a, in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And um, but it shows and people can tell um, just like she was able to tell. She said, that's that's what you want to do. And so it's easy for people to see when you're doing what you want to do and when you're happy. It is. It is. So I get I, I get to uh, have to leave the screen. Charlene, okay. and I'm going to be listening and watching, but I got to get a little stuff done. Well, so so I'll, I'll be listening that. on the sidelines. Bye, All right, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I get that a lot when I when I really get to talking about training or mastermind groups or business research or something. People say, you're not a little excited, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to drop in? Just come in and say, hey, Mr. Steve from the UK, who's probably eating your lunch, but I haven't seen you in forever. Maybe. Nothing like calling you out. <laughs> Hello. Oh my word, look at that full face on. Well, that's yeah. unusual. What the heck? Hi, Steve. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again, Charlene. Yeah, we moved home. Ah. 
So you're looking at a, a webcam mounted now and a new background. The foam is temporarily gone. You're looking at cupboards now and a bass guitar. Okay. Are you going to be soundproofing there, that particular room? I don't know. It's, it looks quite, the whole house was pretty nicely done up. Um, yeah. Probably. <laughs> don't, what, the only reason you soundproofed the other one was because it looked like crap? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> the only reason you had foam was your idea of interior decorating. See, that would be me. Mm. I would do that. My husband laughs at me because I don't really care about that stuff. I would put egg crates on here just and call it soundproofing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're a similar ill. I don't want to paint, you know, I don't want to paint. What the, why would you want to do that? Stick stuff up there. This is glue for crying out loud. There you go. Um, but yes, just to say you did call me out correctly. I was eating a pear. I, will, I could show you the pear, but no, well, I won't do that. All right, thank you. Um, and my contribution to this uh, conversation this morning mm -hmm. uh, is about um, taking a kind of success break uh, after you've achieved your goal. And I was, I was curious as to the, the value that you and your listeners um, place upon um, rewarding yourself, breaks. How much does a break, a reward break, uh, give you that extra performance when you start up again? That's, that's what I'm heading to. That's my question. I relax that's now. That's interesting because I don't do that. Okay. I don't take reward breaks. I will take um unplugged breaks um and they're um they're good because it really really clears my mind now for me to take a break means to be doing something that requires just as much focus and attention as whatever it is that i'm working on so for instance is on saturday i spent the entire day and i'm not kidding when i say 10 to 12 hours at a pool hall I was in uh, an eight ball tournament. Oh, cool. I uh, came in fourth, really, really pleased, really pleased, right. really, really pleased with uh, my, my level. It was, it was good. Completely, pretty much unplugged. I had my cell phone with me and occasionally I dialed into the Wi-Fi, um, connected there and, and checked a couple of messages on Facebook, caught up with friends, let them know that I was there, how I was doing. That's pretty much it. I wasn't working on anything. I wasn't communicating with clients. I really was focused in the pool hall. And my entire focus, of course, was on the table every time I went to make a shot. I find that very relaxing because it's the same level of intensity that I will put in a project when I'm here at the office. Um, so it's what happens is when I came back, I had fresh eyes. And I was inspired with new ideas. There you go. You know, and I felt um, a little enthusiasm. Not more necessarily, but a little, I felt I could feel the enthusiasm, ready to tackle it, you know. Um, but I've not ever, I've always had difficulty rewarding myself upon the completion of something. And it's never really fit in with. <laughs> How I work. I've tried it, and it just comes out as false to me. Um, I don't got um, any great woohoo with it. So that's how I work. But I put it out to the audience, see what they have to say. What do you yeah, think? but is that because that's where you are in life? Perhaps when you get a bit older and you start looking at things and you say, "Well, I achieved that," then the, maybe the the desire to always do better is is not quite as pressing and you can say to yourself do you know what i'm actually at a stage now that i wanted to be 20 years ago and so i'm actually going to bask in the moment and drink my tea for example i think you should let me put it to you that way <laughs> well i'm i'm it's funny because when um So on Saturday, I was in the pool tournament, and on Sunday, it was league play. So I went to, to the other pool hall, right, with the team. And what I hadn't, didn't know was that on Saturday, many people from the tournament had called 
the other pool hall, telling them that they were being well represented. That's how well I was doing, that they should be excited because this is who she just beat, who she's up again against. I found out later I was targeted to be the winner. It was, you know, it's like, oh, well, okay. But for me, the basking came in when a handful of people on Sunday came over. But even then, it's an acknowledgement that they're saying, congratulations, they're saying, you know, I heard you played this well, that's fantastic. You know, it's been good watching you improve. It's, you know, those sort of things. Um, there was a great level of satisfaction in that. And, and were you and, able to take the compliment? Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's not difficult. But right. it's, um, I don't know, it's just... I don't take I don't take my achievements as um, just part of the work a day, but I also so I've always when I have achieved something said, "Wow, good job." That's good. And that's what's what's coming back. Of so now it's time to move on. So I if exactly. I tackled uh, you know yeah I tackled a piece on the piano or I won a competition in music or if I. Um, you know, when I was first published in my writings when I was a teenager and the multiple times I was published in magazines was, whew, yes, good job. And so that's really the extent of it. It's not ever been what I call celebratory. Now I'll join in somebody else's. Okay. Well, maybe that will come. Um, and anyway. How old do I have to get, Steve? <laughs> I'm going to be 52 next month, for God's sake. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Easily it could be in my 60s, right? All right. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I think maybe because um, I've been trying for 25 years to move out of that district into this district. And oh. then, yeah, and then the, um, the actual moving process itself was hell. And... And then the it up. I don't like it. Yeah, I won't bore you with the detail, but just to say that when and, I, and then I've been working really hard to catch up because of the work that was lost through all this. Okay. And I, I was working away and I got to this morning and I thought, do you know what, mate? You've actually you've achieved what you set out to do. Stop flogging yourself. Just enjoy life for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And now the thing that I'd like to report back on, perhaps in a week's time, which might be of interest to you on this topic is um, what bonus do you get by allowing yourself that time out, particularly in a creative process? I suspect a big one. I do, because I've worked with creative processes all my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually think in terms of productivity, when you've reached the goal, allowing some time out, allowing the freshness to come back is a good way of going about things. Yeah, it's yeah, like a palate cleanser. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're in a creative endeavor, the focus is really on that particular outcome. Yeah. So I mean, I've done that when I, I just finished an ebook that was fine, like finally, I finally got the cover for it. Boom, I could get it up there, right? And it's not a great big ebook, but it's enough, and it can be fleshed out. If I get enough response from it, meaning I don't know what the number is, quite honestly, but if I get um engagement from it and people want to know more i'll be happy to flesh it out a little bit more kind of thing but it, it took some some effort and some time and it was some you know very focused on it it was about uh, it's all about self-sabotage and stopping it right so it was that, that inner look at so this is how that kind of thinking looks let's change it over what can you do to stop being your own worst enemy kind of thing based on how i see the world um, and uh, I had to walk away from it when it was done. I put it up. It was just a few days ago. Put it up on the site to be sold, and uh, that's it. I didn't. I didn't work on a writing project. I didn't work on uh, blogging, or I've got another ebook that needs my attention. Didn't do it because I needed to. And I, that's why I call it a palate cleanser. I needed to just wipe out, finish that. Yeah. Yeah. Before I walked into another creative endeavor. So, yeah. That totally, I totally agree with that. The only thing, I'll, and I'll leave with this, the only thing that muddles that whole scenario is when you have to do something through the pressure of um, 
money. All of a sudden it becomes production instead of yeah. a creative endeavor, yeah. Yeah. So, well, but even, even within that, I think um, mini breaks um, are still going to be productive. So the question that I have for you, Steve, okay. now that we've covered those things, is do those breaks, be they reward-oriented or palate cleansing or midway through, whatever they may be, do they affect your level of satisfaction with during the process or upon achieving? Well, I think we're similar in that um, when I'm in the process, I don't really want to be interrupted and that is my focus. Um, when, because don't forget, Charlene, um, sorry, just a little bit about me here, but you remember I've been animating that for six and a quarter years solid, and I came to the end of that process about a month ago. So that's a huge shift. Wow. Yeah, it's a huge shift, and, and you cannot, I don't think you can, just say, right, I'm done with that, right, the next thing is, right, 10 minutes, and then we're off. It just, I don't yeah. think you can maintain that kind of, even if you're the most determined person in the world, it isn't sensible. Yeah. So I'm not really answering your question, am I? Yeah. <laughs> so so did you have great satisfaction when it was done? You finished it six and a quarter years. Funny enough, yes. But the what happened was when you get close to that, it's almost like a sense of mourning because you think, <laughs> oh, like, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore now. What That's the heck am I going to do now? Exactly. <laughs> There's some of that about it. But then when you've got a bit of distance, you look back and you go, flipping heck, I pulled it off. Now that is satisfying and will get more satisfying the older you get because you'll look back at that area. The further say, away you get from the yeah. end of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so probably in answer to your question, there's varying levels of satisfaction. But, but it, the important principle is to allow yourself that satisfaction. Excellent. So and good that, to see you. You too. I shall disappear into the ether, listening in the background. Woohoo. Yeah, you're going to go woo woo on me. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> oh, Steve, such a pleasure to see you again. So thrilled that you finished it. And congratulations on moving to a new district. I have no idea what that means, but it was something that you wanted and you're excited about it. So I'm excited for you. Anybody else want to drop in and say hey and talk about? Determining your level of satisfaction. You know, putting this principle to work that says um, we can control our mental attitude. Are we doing the work that we're meant to do? I guess we could take it the other way, right? That why aren't you satisfied? I think it's okay to, and the book even, and the chapter talks about um, inspirational dissatisfaction. And that's where you have that, le you're, you're doing what you want to do, you're doing what you're suited to, but you know that there's something more, there's adversity happening, or it just, what's happening now just isn't quite enough, right? So it's that level of dissatisfaction that isn't a mental attitude so much as you're recognizing that you could be doing more with something. So, for instance, let's put in here is that Einstein was dissatisfied because Newton's laws didn't answer all his questions. Well, Einstein's the scientist and he's the thinker. So he kept inquiring into nature and higher mathematics until he came up with the theory of relativity. From that theory, the world has, of course, developed the method of breaking the atom, learned the secret of transmuting energy into matter and vice versa, and dared and succeeded to conquer space and all sorts of amazing things we likely would not have accomplished, right? Likely not have accomplished if Einstein had not developed inspirational dissatisfaction. So we're going to bring Betsy in. And you're the one that admitted you were older than me, my, my dear. Yeah. Although I have to wonder, did that surprise you? And if it did, I don't know that I want to know. <laughs> no, I, I don't. <laughs> I was just like, well, hey, I beat you by two years, but you know, <laughs> you know, hey, I want to retire now. Mm. I liked it now. My my internet is still, yeah. you know, wonky, yeah. but, but at least you haven't. If I if I start ruining the show. <laughs>
Yeah, at least I have it. You can kick me off if you need to. Yeah, if you get too stuck, I will. No worries. <sighs> I, I have to one last thing, check my computer to see if it needs an upgrade or something. But anyway, um, this is good for me. I've been, you know, I've been missing in action because I've been up to some some stuff. Um, but, you know, I did have a break because I went to a birth conference, which, you know, was a break from my work. It's still my work, but it was like an, a re-energizer, you know, to be around other people that are doing similar stuff, you know, up to some big things in the world. And um, so that was really good for me. But I definitely, you know, get into the whole not looking at what I've done, you know, like, you know, it took me three years to get the game into a box. And that's huge. Like people will say it to me all the time, like, oh, you know, and, and I'm still like, oh, yeah, but you know, I haven't sold enough. And I haven't, you know, like I haven't like what I haven't done rather than what I have. Done. Well, but the project isn't done yet. Not in my mind. No, yeah, it's like just the beginning. The product. The pro the no, whole point it's just of creating beginning. the product was for you to sell it. So the next part of the process is to sell it. Right. No, I get that. There's a dad's dissatisfaction at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and it and it's like it's like the whole that whole creative process thing. You know, that was the fun and the joy. It it wasn't always easy, but it was more fun than this part. I'm not yeah, finding most a lot creatives, of joy quite honestly, <laughs> in um, this part. The most real creatives like like you and like Steve don't do the business side very well. It's very difficult. Because it's a totally yeah, different way I, of thinking. Those are where the rules are. Those are where the restrictions are in order to do business well, to do to handle the business side. Um, so, yeah, I get that. Well, and, you know, and I have, you know, been bringing you know, people into the fold, like I'm very hesitant because I've gotten, you know, I've made some poor choices in the past with spending money on people. So I get to pick you when I'm done with my online classroom because <laughs> I'm in the middle of something with, but um, I'm, what I'm doing is like um, recreating um, myself, I guess, like you said before, I was relating to that because I've been doing this for over 20 years and I've really, my business yeah. has been a hobby. I mean, honestly, I mean, it has brought money in, but I haven't really said, you know, I'm an expert and I deserve to get, you know, paid X amount. And I'm, so that's what I'm in the middle of. So there's, there's yeah, you gotta catch the up. inside work, you know, and then yeah, the outside. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Well, and the interesting so, thing for me is, so I was talking uh, with somebody uh, yeah. who was asking me how I how I came up with the goal, right, of what I wanted Search by Burke and Grow Because You Know to look like. And I told him that I tried, but I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't because it, it meant merging the two and it didn't feel right to merge the two. And I wasn't sure how I was going to merge the two. And But I did come up with a higher goal that in business, this is what I do and what I provide. The, the name of the business wasn't, and the actual structure itself wasn't as important. Having said that, both are the same business model, just so we understand that. So the name of the business didn't matter as much, and, and the, um, um, the physica physical things of actually what was provided what was interesting, because we were talking about the end goal, what is, what is the business going to look like in five years? Well, pff, screw that. Hell if I know. This is the internet. And that's exactly what I told them. I said, what do I know? It's the internet, for God's sakes. For all I know, we're suddenly all going to be in space. I have no idea. What the hell? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so, and they laughed at my reaction, but it was, it, that's the truth. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that this is what I want. I, there are specific revenue goals that I'm working towards. And there's um, the end goal, which is to live in the RV, to be able to do all this. and Or to be able to live on, in the RV doing everything that we're doing. Um, the reinvention has been how I see myself within the business. 
that's been the reinvention. And the and what's funny is right. when Gal said it to me yesterday was um, even she recognized after we talked a little bit, I said, I'm, I'm doing basically the same stuff. And I am. It's just been modified. Some has been brought forward. Mm. Other things have been put into the back end. So I flipped, basically I flipped my business back to what it originally had started out with and then brought out two other things that had been added on since. So I started out doing business research and consulting Primary customer base was in the financial district, June of 08. September of 08, the telephone stops ringing. Oh, yeah, financial crisis. Hello. <laughs> Early Damn. 09, everybody, <laughs> not everybody, but I started, the phone started ringing, but the, what they were looking for was online marketing. I knew that. I've been doing that since 95. Okay. Well, I didn't, mm. never thought to make that the business, really didn't want to. But in response to that, shifted. So I turned yes. that as the primary focus with the business research consulting being secondary. As that's moved forward, now this is early 09, I was always also doing training on the mastermind groups. And that was like a, a side thing, it wasn't a revenue stream to amount to much. And as mm. moved forward, right, into 2013 is when it started looking like I was gonna shut down the business because I hated what I was doing. So that by 2014, I was starting to shift things around. And then 2015, uh, online marketing is way in the background, way in the background. And I brought the training and the mastermind groups forefront and uh, followed by business research, then the online marketing. So when I told it to her that way, she said, well, actually, yeah, you've been doing all of this. I said, I know, but it's how I fit within all of this, you know, and it's how I see myself within all of this. I never brought... The changes are I never brought the training and the mastermind groups to the public because that meant Charlene Burke would have to stand out front. Mm. It couldn't be the business offering. So, yeah. 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 So it's like, yeah, I think. Um, so for me, I have so many things going on at the same time. But the main thing is really just tying it all together yeah. so I have that clear vision. You know, I kind of know, I do know, and it's coming together. But, for example, with the website, I mean, it, it, it matters, but it right. is not the most significant thing. And I, I need to have a well, face. Sometimes but, what can happen to us, and right, it sounds like this is happening to you, is we can get lost in the details so that we're not satisfied. We don't have that yeah. level of satisfaction of being part of the journey towards something because we're kind of lost in the details. And when that happens, yeah, that's that's annoying. Yeah. Because it, it does muddy up um, yeah. what the end goal yeah. looks like. I get that because you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was, I was sharing with my husband, you know, to, you know, cause he's always just like, Oh, you know, take a break, uh, you know, and it's like, you have no idea like what's going on here, you know? So then, and then it's always with me. It's always like that money conversation. Well, I need to pay this person this much if I want this support. I mean, obviously, you know, and so he's like, just do what you need to do. Just take whatever credit card you want. And, and you're like, trying to do it And he's wisely. fine, but I tell myself, well, there's, no. Now, I we just had to talk about that yesterday. Where were you? We just had to talk about that. Okay. Uh, on yeah, the road. Yesterday's driving. program was all about using yes, other people's yes, money. Yeah, on the road. And it involved, it involved wise use yes. of credit oh, miss for business. You know, and why you use credit for business okay. not for personal listen. but it's it, it really it mm. really is all about mm. business if i if my investment in the product or service that i am it's cost benefit analysis basically the reason i have a va is initially just paying for her was a bit of a stretch because like wow all right that's taking it out per month. But if I set it at per month, then I know I don't have this strange numbers coming at me all the time and having to adjust. I know this is what I've budgeted. Well, okay. So it's part of the budget. Why well, within two months it paid for itself. Because I was I was focused on mm. other things now that the VA was taken care of and was getting more sales because of it. 
but the investment initially it wasn't cash. Yeah. yeah. You know, the investment when I purchased what I purchased to get my business yeah. started for Search by Burke, it I couldn't write a check for it. I had an investor for that one. And it was all right, let's right. talk about the terms. Let's talk about what this yeah. looks like. And then adjustments were made as the recession hit, you know. And um but it it takes thoughtful consideration um because it is other people's money mm -hmm. even with the credit card it's mm -hmm. other people's money but it does right. um i would have there was a time right. i would have said an absolute no <laughs> right to something like that but i've learned that sometimes you can't and if yeah. you want to grow the business right yeah that's just it right you want to grow it and you get to figure out yeah. the wise use of the money. And yeah. And we're not talking about frivolous. We're talking about support, like you said, to then get to that next stage because it's like that catch 22. And I guess I make the assumption, Oh, well, they must all have the money to work with to, you know, be able to be doing what they do. You know, other people in like, you know, you yeah, just that's all the stuff you make up in Stop making head. it up. <laughs> So this is all stuff. <laughs> I know, right? Let me make up a good story. About today because <laughs> this interferes with our level of satisfaction, right? When we have unfinished business, yes. when we have um un you know, when we have loose ends that need to be tied up, but we're not sure which direction to go to tie them up, all of that and that some of it can be that inspirational dissatisfaction. Like, I'm just gonna take I mean, we had Einstein there, for goodness sakes, out of the book. Let's take it into reality. You don't want to use the credit card, but you might because you're dissatisfied with where yeah. you are and know you need to be moving forward and it's going to take some cash. Is there another place to get money outside of the credit card? I don't know. There might be. So mm -hmm. that inspirational dissatisfaction um, to mm -hmm. sit back and just ask, well, where else could it come from? and be open to some answers kind of thing might be a way yeah. to move forward. That's what the book's telling us. <laughs> it's not just yeah. me. You know me, I'm telling yeah. you, it's out of the Sounds box. Sounds good. Right? Um, yeah. Oh, I, I know, but you also have the wisdom. You also some have things. the wisdom. Okay, so. I can go with that. <laughs> um, so now let's yeah. go out of the book though, and this clarifies, this does mm -hmm. clarify. Um, do you develop inspirational dis dissatisfaction and how do you turn advantages into advantages? Do you determine what you want? Do you apply faith, clear thinking, positive action, knowing that desirable results can and will be achieved? That's pretty clear. Yeah, it still goes back to PMA, doesn't it? It doesn't matter what. It's, it's, you just, if you get, if you can Take shift back to that, no matter what circumstances yeah. thrown, right, just, okay, it's all going to be okay. And if you believe you're where you should be and everything right. happens that as calms it, yourself. Now I ask as for it the should, answer. it's, you know. See, that's what I do. Let's calm down, right? Clear the right. thinking, just right. breathe, take a step back. And now, now I'm ready for the answer. And, and just put it out there. What's the answer? Right. And then take action once you realize or have the inspiration or you see the answer or it's put in front of you and then put that do it now to work. So that you get into action and you're in a positive direction. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. I like this book. <laughs> yeah. It's like simple. No, no. But simple not always are two easy. very different words. But simple just simply means that I can understand it. That was the whole point right. of being simple, right? Right. So that it's understandable. Mm-hmm. Keep Works it simple, for me. stupid. Yep. <laughs> My dad used to say, yeah, keep it simple, it. stupid. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Work smarter, yeah, not harder. The, you you hear know that what? It used to annoy me yet. to no end when somebody would say that and then not tell me uh, how. <laughs> like you walk yeah, exactly. away, like, like I'm, I'm supposed to know how to do this. Out. If I like, knew how well, to do this, do you think I'd be working this hard? Think about that for a second. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. And then, uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Dallas. So we're at the top of the hour. So I'm going to close out the recording. Um, keep the room open for a bit. Uh, Okay, dear. So thank you for joining me in the live stream, Betsy and Steve nice and Ron. Bye. Thank you, everybody, in the comment section for your questions and comments and participation in the discussion. Glad you were here. Thank you for those watching the replay. Glad you've made it this far. I appreciate you. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose, with purpose, to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. Until next time, have a great day.